Uh, I wanted to get a little bit into H1N1. We've got some new info, and uh, some of you might know Walter Burian out there. He's done some fantastic new research, which uh, points to a planned or, well, planned fake pandemic, as I might call it, uh, back in 2007 with uh, Baxter Pharmaceuticals patenting a strain, which just so happened two years later to be the strain, the pandemic strain of H1N1. Uh, is that a coincidence for you? If that's not enough of a coincidence, uh, well, then you can take a look at the documents we have at DeadlineLive.info. IBM internal documents uh, outline knowledge of a planned pandemic with 100% certainty back in 2006, and we show you the documents. Uh, these were leaked to us, and uh, quite frankly, I'm surprised I still have a website. Uh, I, I believe that the powers that be are just assuming that, well, you won't you won't want to read the scientific language. You won't want to go through the rigmarole of, of trying to figure it out. That's why I'm here to explain some of it to you. They amass you know almost every sector of society. Uh, all of them have the same conclusions, and that is you know massive control over your lives. And that's why we deem it very important to cover this information and to make. Make sure you know about it, and if I can pique your interest enough to go to our website, DeadlineLive.info, pick up some of these documents, because we've got you know actual leaked documents and things that I haven't really seen anywhere else, uh, and you could send those along, and we can you know get this exploded uh, out on the Internet, uh, maybe hopefully even the, the news, uh, don't hold your breath. But if we can do that, uh, perhaps we can protect ourselves. And if I can arm you with the information, perhaps, you know, when the subject comes up around the campfire, so to speak, or the coffee, or the water cooler, or whatever, uh, you'll be armed with the right kind of information. So before we go into some of the documents that we have, some of the new information, let's just cover this. Uh, let's put the swine flu, or whatever it is, H1N1, into some perspective here. What are the symptoms for this influenza A H1N1? Okay, fever, headache, cough, sore throat, runny, stuffy nose, extreme fatigue, muscle aches, Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, all these symptoms may also occur but are more common in children. Well, you know, I had this, well, I had food poisoning, which I mentioned the other day uh, here over the weekend, and I had all those things. Did I have H1N1? I guess I could have been diagnosed as having that. Of course, I knew that it wasn't. So this, of course, can be applied to any seasonal cold or any seasonal flu. The immediate conclusion people jump to is it's swine flu. So just about everyone could have swine flu. Well, isn't that convenient? Convenient. On the death toll, we've got 816 deaths worldwide in 160 countries. Europe, allegedly, 16,556 cases with only 34 deaths. Given that countries are no longer required to test and report individual cases, the number of cases reported actually understates, well, the real number of cases, <laughs> allegedly. Now, again, to put this all into perspective, uh, the odds of death by assault in your lifetime are 331 to 1. Uh, that's a pretty good reason to hold on to your Second Amendment, folks. Death by falling, 250 to 1. De and this probably includes people that, you know, play on the edges of buildings for a living. But, you know, but th this is, these are the overall numbers. Death by firearm, 325 to 1. Death by poison, 1,400 to 1. Death in a car crash, 5,000 to 1. Death by choking on food or something else, 5,001. Death by drowning, 9,001. Death by murder, 20,000 to 1. Death by lightning, 70,000 to 1. Death by dog attack, 137,000 to 1. According to the statistics I have, death in a bathtub, uh, 807,000 to 1. Death by a flood, 713,000 to 1. Death by falling out of bed, 2 million to 1. Uh, death or being killed in a terrorist weapon to mass destruction attack, okay? 6 million to 1. That's why you gave up all your liberties. 1,154 people died worldwide wide. Uh, the odds that you'll die from the swine flu, about 8 million to 1. Yeah, that's right. You are at a greater risk of drowning in a bathtub than dying from swine flu. Of course, this means pandemic, lockdown. Uh, if they had their way, it would have been forced inoculations, quarantines, everything else. We, the people, stood up to that, thankfully, and then they haven't been able to pull that off quite yet. I'll, I'll get to that because they explain this in the IBM documents. Yeah, that IBM that was involved in uh, the Holocaust, allegedly, uh, <laughs> the killing of millions of people by the Nazis. Yeah, yeah those, those IBM guys. I'm going to read their document in a second. But just to keep this all in perspective, the regular run-of-the-mill strains of influenza kill more than 35,000 Americans each year. That's the number. People have played with that, but let's use that. Bird flu, the WHO reports. In June 1st, 2009, 436 cases, 262 deaths. That was supposed to wipe us out. Of course, you remember, you're supposed to forget that. Just like you're supposed to forget that the documents involved in global warming.
going to have been fixed. To just forget all about that. Because we, we were on top of that. We were way out in front of that, and I'm proud that we were, and we were right. Vindicated again. More than 25 million people have died from AIDS, or whatever it is, since 1981. 1.6 million died from tuberculosis in 2005. Where's the pandemic alerts? SARS. Severe Adult Respiratory Distress Syndrome, 167 deaths up to 2003. Now, that was also supposed to kill millions. Now, the beneficiaries, of course, the drug companies, uh, more medication sold. Doctors, patients with mild cold will not take any chances. We're business. And, of course, this embellishes the need for, you know, national health care. Uh, medical institutions uh, benefit, media, more interest, more sales, you know, uh, death sales, a pandemic sells as news. Politicians certainly have their fingers in the pie, as well as universities, uh, the intelligentsia, et cetera, et cetera. One of the only treatments, of course, as we know, Tamiflu, which, by the way, was the only treatment for the bird flu. Not convenient. Only license uh, for Tamiflu is to Gilead Sciences Incorporated. Roche manufactures it under the license patent protection till 2016. Tamiflu, USA ordered 25 million doses. Total cost, $2 billion, $80 uh, per. 65 governments have ordered. Orders to 2008, 200 million doses. Price is $70. Chairman of Gilead, 97 to 2001, uh, holds major stocks. Donald Rumsfeld, former U.S. Secretary of Defense. Bush authorized $1.7 billion to fight the bird flu. 14% went to Gilead. Gilead shares rose 700% since 2005 when stock markets fell off 40%. Total revenue, second quarter, uh, 09, up 29% over 2008. When all the other companies are going bankrupt and going out of business and the economic, well, these guys are, are going up 29 Net income for second quarter, 2009, 571.4 million. That's just the second quarter. Up from 434 million, 2008. Royalties from Roche, Roche uh, 78 uh, million per quarter. 10% of every vaccine, they think, went to Rumsfeld. So, again, to put this in perspective, every month 50,000 people die from AIDS in Africa, allegedly. Every day, what they die of exactly, uh, we, can, we can certainly debate that, and we have. Every day, nearly 1,600 people die from AIDS every year, 18,000 people die on our roads, 25,000 people are murdered every year, 80,000 people die from tuberculosis. Yet we're forced to focus on what H1N1 swine flu. Why? Because again, like the global warming scan, it was cooked up in advance.